By the year 2050, the world's population will have reached 9.3 billion people. Clean water, sources of energy, sufficient food, all will become increasingly scarce. Even the space we need to live our lives, the very environment that sustains us, will be under unprecedented pressure. Where can we turn for solutions to these seemingly insurmountable challenges? Join us as we meet a new generation of visionaries who are intent on the human race flourishing. The Sun, with a diameter more than 100 times that of Earth's, the star at the center of our solar system generates a constant supply of energy on an almost incomprehensible scale. This immense nuclear furnace provides the energy necessary for life to exist on our planet. Today, solar power provides only a tiny fraction of the world's energy, largely due to expensive per unit cost, inefficiencies in transmission technology, and limited energy storage capacity. More effective use of this freely available resource could revolutionize human life, as well as free us from the compromises attached to the use of fossil fuels. In February of 2009, a solar panel manufacturing company in Arizona reached an important milestone. It reduced production costs for solar modules to less than one dollar per watt. First Solar focuses on the most familiar solar technology, photovoltaics, or simply PV. I'm Lisa Kruger. I'm the Vice President of Sustainable Development for First Solar. The beauty of solar and of PV technology is that it can be used in a variety of applications and frankly anywhere in the world. PV can be used in large utility scale applications, much like a standalone power plant. They can be used on commercial rooftops or even in residential applications. By harnessing the photovoltaic effect, the cells in a solar panel use semiconducting materials that generate electric current when exposed to sunlight. I think a lot of us saw some early generation PV technologies. Why it didn't really catch on is because photovoltaics were expensive. People weren't willing to pay the price. What First Solar focused on was large scale applications in free field that would meet the needs of a, of a wide variety of people in a central station PV plant. We did that to first drive down costs so that solar could become more affordable and then more broadly available to everyone. Currently, one acre of photovoltaic panels can provide enough energy to power approximately 30 US homes. First Solar has unique thin film technology. So the amount of semiconductor material we use in a solar panel is about a hundredth of that in traditional solar panels. We have always had a view of product life cycle management. Our semiconductor material is actually byproducts of zinc and copper mining. We use those in our manufacturing process. Our modules then have a 25 plus year life. And at the end of life, we arrange for collection and recycling to ensure that the glass and the semiconductor material can be reused to create new solar modules. The biggest challenges facing the solar industry are how to transmit and store the energy collected by solar panels. How do we get that power to the places that need it? And how do we save it for use when the sun isn't shining? An engineer in Hawaii has offered up one unique solution in his design for a system that concentrates solar power and stores the sun's energy for use around the clock. My name is Darren Tikimura. I'm the president and CEO of SOPA-G Inc. You know, the inspiration behind SOPA-G was a goal to try and help, uh, at first, Hawaii become more renewable, uh, use more of our renewable energy resources to move off of fossil-based energy. 
Hawaii, because we're geographically isolated, we have tremendous problems with energy. Uh, first of all, we import all of our energy. We're about 90% dependent on oil. You can use Hawaii as your lab. You can use uh, this very small, concentrated location and try new things uh, and see what the impacts are of those new things. And if it works great, it's very logical to extrapolate that across the entire continent of the United States, across Europe, uh, around the world. What Sopaji does is concentrating solar power. We actually use mirrors. We focus those mirrors on the sun and those mirrors allow us to intensify the sunlight to create heat, a high temperature heat that is. And that high temperature heat can be used for things like power generation. CSP, Concentrating Solar Power Technologies, generally have storage. And the way that CSP technology stores their energy is in large storage containers in which you store a liquid. The liquid can be water, it can be some form of heat transfer fluid, could even be things like exotic salts. The collector focuses the sun's energy on a heat transfer fluid. The superheated fluid is then pumped into an insulated storage container to be used as needed. Energy storage is the next major hurdle for renewable energy. Uh, and what we've conventionally done is stored energy in things like batteries. But uh, that's very expensive and unfortunately has a relatively short life. For example, the laptop battery you might have in your computer may last three to five years. Containers last 30 to 40 years. Energy today is generally produced in what we call central stations, meaning that you've got a large power plant someplace out there. Uh, you've got large wires running into the city and that's how we get our energy. And the thing that people may not realize is we have a lot of losses in those lines. The transformation of the energy grid is going to go from central to decentralized, very similar to the way that we looked at computing. Whereas back in the day, you had one computer in an office and everyone had to go there uh, to the PC where everyone now has a PC on their desktop. Very similar to energy. Uh, going from the central power plant to having little power stations on everybody's rooftop. Electricity has provided tremendous benefits to, to all of us. It has enhanced economic development and everyone's standard of living. But it's come at a cost. In the U.S. and in other parts of the world, what's really important is that we reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and displace that with um, electricity generating sources that are kinder to the environment and solar is that. What makes me passionate is knowing what we're doing is, is changing the world. We have a solution uh, to many of the world's problems in, in solar energy today and the continual evolution of this technology uh, continues to give me hope about the future and that we can become more sustainable and that we can kind of claim back our worlds uh, from you know drilling and, and dirty fuels and bad air uh, by using solar technology to shift over owning our energy source and creating it ourselves uh, that gives me a tremendous amount of, of faith uh, in the future. The power of human ingenuity has already ushered in a new age of technological advancement and prosperity. By deciding to face the challenges of the coming decades head-on, every one of us can participate in securing the future of planet Earth. Whether it's by reapplying existing technologies in surprising ways, or by developing radical new solutions, there is hope. Join us next time as we meet more visionaries who are rising to the challenge of 9.3.